Hello there, this is Bonfire 300. Um, right now I'm just going to do my general overview of E3 this year, E3 2008. Lately E3 has kind of been going downhill seeing as it's been like, there have been way less sponsors, things like that, so it's just kind of getting a bit lower and lower, but you know, uh, it's still a good show. So I'm just going to talk talk about it, give my opinions on the, on the company, see what's going on. So uh, let's start off with Sony. First of all, in my opinion, they had the best con press conference by far. Or not by far, but it was still a really good press conference. Um, my favorite bit was definitely when they used Little Big Planet to showcase all their, like their sales and the information and such like that. Like, while everyone else was doing PowerPoint presentations, they just made this custom level and just showed us all, showed everyone that, and it was amazing. I was just laughing the whole way through because it was so well pulled off. Um, also, we got some more looks at Resistance Two. Um, I'll be totally honest, I wasn't really into the first Resistance, I just found it really not very fun. But this this one looks much better, much more cinematic, much more immersive, overall better. Um, the, also, the press conference uh, went pretty good. The, the opening bit like had a lot of, a lot of information. Yeah, sorry, this is really badly spoken, I don't have a whole lot of preparation. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, my only complaint is the fact that they're still keeping the PS2 going, which... I don't know, some people can interpret it as them just supporting those who don't want to buy a PS3 and they just want to st stick with the PS2, which was a good system, by the way, a very good system. But in a lot of ways, it seems kind of like they're just relying on those people too much. Anyways, um, at the end of their press conference, we got a teaser trailer for God of War 3. That game is amazing. Uh, if you've ever played it, it's just so satisfying to hack guys apart. My only complaint about it was that it was too much of a typical teaser. It was like, you know, main character, silhouette, storm in the background, with voiceovers. Yeah, how many times has that been done? Every time. You can probably see it right now. Like, Anyways, um... So yeah, they did really well the show. They're probably my favorite press conference out of all three. Uh, then you got Microsoft. Obviously, the big game here is Gears of War 2. Now, first of all, I'd like to just say this. Anyone who says that it's just Gears 1.5, I'd say you'd have to be lying or you're just a fanboy or you got to get your eyes checked out because the actual level design looks like it's been tweaked quite a bit, so it moves along as a, at a much better pace. I found the first Gears of War was too much like a beat-em-up with guns where it's like... You just walk into an area and then you find yourself gunning down a million guys and it would just get boring after a while. And then finally you'd go on and, oh, look at that, another million guys, sorry, I gotta keep shooting. This one looks much more like you actually keep on pressing forward. And let's face it, that cliffhanger at the end, fantastic. You get to ride one of those things in the game. That is, that's awesome. And of course, it's possibly one of the biggest bitch slaps in the entire show, the four days. We saw that Final Fantasy XIII is now going to be on the 360. Sony fanboys are absolutely freaking out. It's kind of funny, but whatever. Um, yeah, it's kind of funny though. A lot of them are making fun words like, "Oh, well, it's gonna have to be on like 80 discs, and as soon as you put it in, you're gonna get the red rings of death." And you know what? It's fanboys being fanboys. What can you say about it? Anyways, uh, finally we get Fable 2. Um, I never played the first Fable. I heard it was a lot of fun, kind of buggy, but a lot of fun. This one actually looks pretty sick, and actually I'm going to be getting a 360 very soon. I guys have to get the money right now. Anyway, so, overall, Microsoft, good press conference. My only complaint, once again, is that, well, actually, not once again. My only real complaint is that they seem to be taking it with too much of an immature image. They're, like, kind of poking fun at Sony and Nintendo or... Just that they're competitors in general, which doesn't really look professional. Also, one more note, it's obvious that they're kind of pushing towards a much more casual audience, which... Let's face it, ever since the Wii, and a little bit before, that's just been a market that's been taking off. Oh, and speaking of the Wii, here we have Nintendo's press conference. Now, I know a lot of my fans are also Nintendo fans, so I would like to clarify here. I still like my Wii, I'm going to keep it, I'm not going to sell it. But please, you have to understand that this is my opinion. The Nintendo press conference really was awful. Like, I thought the 2007 one was awful. No, this one beat that one down. It was the new level of awful. Started off with Cammy Dunaway, which was some, like, spokesperson from Nintendo. And 
It's not even that bothers me anything about her. Well, actually, it is something about her, but it's not something subtle. It's just the fact that she always had that fake enthusiasm on. Which, honestly, you'd be watching something, and if they were showing something good, it would have been like you're eating a bowl of ice cream, and then someone takes a pile of dog crap and throws it in the back of your head. It just disturbs you as soon as she starts talking. Like, literally, she is a new definition. Cammy Dunaway, consider yourself in the dictionary with the definition of fail. I'll even read an example sentence right now. <clears throat> I was on my skateboard the other day until I pulled a Cammy Dunaway, and now my ankle is twisted. Alright, now, let's move on. Um, Now, starting with some good news... We got an announcement of a new Animal Crossing game, which has a bit bit of an MMO format to it. Pretty good idea. It would work. Uh, but best of all, though, we, we found out that we now have voice chat. It's going to be coming out when Animal Crossing comes out. And instead of it being a headset, it's like a little microphone you put on top of your TV. Hopefully there will be an option for those who are far away from their TVs, but not a bad design. I, I guess it works. And Nintendo mentioned they're designing something for voice chat, which lets other people monitor. Although... Let's face it, you can still hear what someone's saying into a microphone. Whatever. Um, we also got a look at Wii Sports Resort. And the big advertisement of this is that it has the Motion Plus on it. It's a little, a little cube that you plug onto the bottom of the Wii Remote and it's supposed to enhance the motion control. And, well, essentially, Wii Sports Resort is supposed to, supposed to really showcase this. The Frisbee game, I found it was a big wash-up. The jet ski game looks kind of fun, but looks like it could use some work. Swordplay, though, great. Like, that just looks like it is so satisfying. Like, and let's face it, that's what we were all excited to do on the Wii originally. We just wanted to, like, grab Wii remotes, start hacking into each other with swords, and we thought we were going to get that r with red steel. Nope. Nope. Not at all. Just no. Whatever. Okay, so here's where the... Now, I haven't exactly been talking about a whole lot of bad things, but once again, it was the fake enthusiasm of the whole show that ruined it for me, but this is what really killed it. So, at the end of the show, the lights dim down, fog starts kicking in, and we're thinking, oh yeah, we're going to see a new Zelda, we're going to see a new Kid Icarus, or something like that. What do they show us? Wii Music. We saw Wii Music in 2006, and they brought it back, and it really was not a good ending for the show. And the reason for this was simply because... Okay, one, it was just done with more of that fake enthusiasm, which left a really bad taste in everyone's mouth. I can tell you. As soon as we all saw it, we all just kind of did one of those face palms and were like, what, what were they thinking? What were they thinking? <sighs> now, I saw it in motion, and I thought, well, that could look kind of fun, but then when I had it explained to me what they were actually doing, I lost all interest and actually got... In like, a hatred towards the game. You don't actually do anything to really play the instrument. You basically hold it in the way that you would hold the instrument, and then say, let's say you're playing a saxophone, you just have to press the one or two button in a way, and that just makes you play a note, then you press the next one, you play the next note. It's all pre-recorded, there's no skill involved, no musical talent, no timing talent, it's just go nuts on the buttons. So, like, in all reality, it's just, Seems like a really big wash-up. That's the sort of thing I would expect from a third-party developer who's, like, absolutely as lazy as ever. Not Nintendo. And on top of that, now you're still thinking the drums. It's like, oh, the drums will probably be pretty cool. You know, you just bang away, use your arms. Well, that's the thing. Originally, that's what you were supposed to do. They changed it, so now you're pressing buttons to change what you're actually hitting. And doesn't that remove the whole point of the Wii in the first place? The only point of the motion control now is just to, to swing down and hit the drum. In other words, it's tacked on, it's pointless... And I cannot believe they chose that to end their show, because that is downright pathetic. And also what bothers me is that, one, they said that this would be more to appeal to the hardcore audience, which it absolutely did not, except for maybe Animal Crossing, but that's it. Now, after the press conference, they actually revealed that they were working on a new Zelda right now, and a new Pikmin game even, which is great and all, but I don't know why they decided to wait till then to announce it. Why didn't they just talk about it at the actual press conference when everyone's listening? It just bottles the mind for me. But I don't know why they felt the need to have such a casual appear appeal this year, because I can't imagine any casual gamer is going to be, like, hovering over a computer looking at E3 media. They're... So in a way, they appealed to the completely wrong audience to this. I don't know what's happening to their marketing plan. Anyways... Now, as I said before, I'm not selling my Wii, because ironically, the third-party games actually look really good. 
Like, uh, we got Fatal Frame 4 coming to the Wii. Nintendo bought the rights to that. The Conduit, it's a first-person shooter that actually I'm very excited for. It looks pretty sweet. Um, and then we also have Mega Man 9. It's it's like the old-school 8-bit Mega Man. I love those games. I'm excited for this. And that one's actually coming out on the WiiWare channel, PlayStation Network, and Xbox Live Arcade. And speaking of multi-platform, we also have... Well, actually, Mad World isn't isn't multi-platform. It's only on the Wii. It looks incredibly gory, incredibly stylish. Once again, not very much much preparation here. You got like a crude list. Whatever. I'm getting off topic. So yeah, we have Resident Evil 5, which we've seen co-op play for. Looks amazing. Street Fighter 4 looks like a lot of fun. However, the third-party game that really grabbed my attention was Fallout 3. I had never played a Fallout game beforehand, but it's like I saw the trailer. You're actually looking at the trailer right now, and it just looks incredible. It's some would call it Elder Scrolls 4 with guns. Is that necessarily a bad thing? Elder Scrolls 4 was amazing. This game looks like it's going to be even better. Okay, so that was basically my E3 overview. I know there's a lot of games I didn't mention, like De Blob, such like that. Please, I kept those in mind, but I can't make this too long. But I'd finally like to close with a bit of personal opinion, where I would like to boycott Wii Music. I'm just so highly against it. I'm not really against Wii Sports Resort. I'll have to see some prices before I can make a choice. But Wii Music is just a no for me. In fact, I suggest that I know I've, I've always respected other people's opinions. I've never felt the need to insult someone because they like one thing or another. But please, if you are one of those Wii gamers who has said we need better third-party games, then don't buy Wii Music. Buy Fatal Frame or buy Mad World or buy The Conduit or Tales of Symphonia 2 because... Those are those third-party games that you have been asking for. So if you buy Wii Music, then other developers are going to look and think, okay, this stuff sells well, and we are going to get a flood of knockoffs, and basically we're not going to get those core Wii titles. But if you buy The Conduit or Fatal Frame, then other developers will look at that, realize there is a market for that on the Wii, and they will buy that, and they will develop for that. But it's all up to the consumer right now. So please, don't just go out and buy Wii Music because it has the Wii name on it. Just go out, think about what you're buying, even if it's made by a third-party title or a company. Sorry, I can't think right now. The same thing went with No More Heroes. That was an amazing game. I love that game, but no one bought it, so no one's really taking note. Same with Zack and Wiki. So my point is, don't feel the need to choose a game based on the company. Just look at it, really research its quality. Please, if you can, check out the conduit. Like, go to IGN. I'll put a link in this video description about some articles and some videos they have there. Read about it. It looks like a great game. Alright, sorry that I had to rant a bit at the end. Thank you all for listening. Good night, people.